everyone in this video i will guide you in winding up a deceased estate legally equipping you with all the tools before seeking legal help providing you with an outline on what to expect and key pointers to help you speed up the process by consolidating all information now don't miss this key step in advertising to creditors to lodge a claim i'll explain the format that's required to advertising later in our session now what happens to the deceased estate freezing of bank accounts and how to safeguard you and your spouse in any unforeseen mishaps notifying the nominated executor by selecting an executor and understanding the executor fees which the industry which are industry standard and regulated where must estates be reported in situations where estates value is over or under 250,000 rand when and by who must estates be reported legalities around reporting estates why you need an appraiser to legally bind estate value costs and stand in for any disputes process to follow when winding up an estate a complete guide to save you time and money by equipping you with the ins and outs regarding estate windings an example of an advertisement in the newspaper or government gazette deceased estate notifying the public for any creditors to step forward and lodge a claim against the estate an example of a liquidation and distribution account correctly list liquidation and distribution items this tick box will list or will guide you in listing all items required an inventory to be completed to reflect a list of your of the deceased assets or uh, assets example of liabilities and transfer you also will have an example of a letter of executorship now don't forget to like share and subscribe to our youtube channel we will cover many interesting topics to empower you and all south african citizens you can also download 800 plus free legal agreements on the website you can download the release of debts by deceased estate agreements or executors notice agreements on the website i will also add the links in the description for ease of download now what happens to the deceased estate at death the estate of the deceased person is frozen and no one may withdraw funds from the deceased bank account or deal with any of the estate assets without the necessary permission from the master of the high court if the deceased was married in community of property the joint estate is frozen this situation often creates hardship for the surviving spouse especially where the bank accounts were all in the name of the joint estate or in the name of the deceased while the person is alive obtain signing power on bank accounts to prevent the freezing of accounts which you cannot access in the situation where your spouse or partner is deceased now the administration of deceased estates act 66 of 1965 sets out the process where someone dies in south africa or outside of south africa but has assets within south africa the deceased estate must be reported to the master of the high court in the area that the person lived at the time the person died for example if you lived in cape town you must report the deceased estate to the master's office in cape town if however the person died outside the country but left property within the country the deceased estate must be reported at any of the master's office within the country notifying the nominated executor the responsibility of notifying the nominated executor falls to the family of the deceased they should provide the executor with the necessary information and the documents needed to administer the estate including details of all the assets and liabilities in the estate the executor will require all this information to give effect to the provisions of the deceased of the deceased will or the interstate succession act this will also enable the nominated executor to attend to the reporting of the estate to the master of the high court will thereafter issue the nominated executor with the letters of executorship <clears throat> to commence the administration of the estate now when selecting an executor although our law permits you to nominate a family member or friend as executor bear in mind that it is up to the master of the high court to confirm the appointment if the master is not satisfied that the person you have nominated is sufficiently qualified to do the job he will request that your executor be existed by a pro be assisted by a professional agent such as an attorney accountant or fiduciary specialist 
Now, executor guideline against fees. Executor fees are regulated by statute and are set out at a maximum of 3.5% plus VET on the value of the gross assets in your state. However, in many instances, these fees are non-negotiable or are negotiable depending on the size and complexity of your estate. If costs are an issue, bear in mind that, your point, that appointing a friend or family member does not necessarily reduce these costs as they are entitled to a charge to charge the same fee as a professional firm. Example, an estate with 3 million rand will pay 120,750 rand in fees. Now, where must estates be reported? Where the deceased was living in the Republic of South Africa, the estate must be reported to the master of the High Court in whose area of jurisdiction the deceased was living 12 months prior to his or her death. Where the deceased was not living in the Republic of South Africa at the time of his or her death, the estate may be reported to any master of the High Court, provided it is reported to only one master. An affidavit in which it is stated that the letters of executorship has not already been granted by any other master of the High Court in South Africa must accompany the reporting documents. Now, from the 5th of December 2002, all magistrates' offices are designated service points for the master of the High Court and estates can be reported there. <clears throat> However, these service points have limited jurisdiction in all estates with wills as well as estates that exceed 125,000 rand in value will be transferred to the provincial master's office. Therefore, it is advisable to report these estates directly to the master's office. Now, you need to take note if the estate value is less than 215,000 rand and there's a minor hair, legal aid SA can be contacted to assist in this regard now when and by whom must estates be reported the estate of a deceased person must be reported to the master of the high court within 14 days of the death the death is to be reported by any person having control or possession of any property of the documents that is or intends to be the will of the deceased the estate is reported by lodging a completed death notice and other reporting documents which or with the master which may be obtained from any office of the master of the high court magistrate's office now why do you need an appraiser when the property has to be valued in a deceased estate it is normally done by an appraiser and appraisers are appointed for specific areas by the minister of justice and constitutional development in terms of section 6 of the administration of estates act number 66 of 1965 Appraisers are entitled to a reasonable remuneration, which is determined by a prescribed tariff of fees. When there is a dispute regarding the correctness of remuneration charged, the appraiser's account must be submitted to the master's for taxation. Now, the process to follow when winding up an estate. There are two different processes in winding up the estate. If the assets in the deceased estate is less than 250,000 rand, the estate is to be administered in terms of section 18, subsection 3 of the Act. An estate to be administered in terms of section 18, subsection 3 is a simpler and quicker process because there are no requirements for the estate or the liquidation and distribution accounts to be advertised. If the estate is more than 250,000, the process is to be followed is longer and more complex and the first difference is that the estate must be advertised in a local newspaper and a government gazette. Secondly, the liquidation and distribution account must also be advertised in a local newspaper and government gazette. <laughs> the master will issue a letter of executorship if the gross value before deductions and claims of the estate is more than 250000 If not, Letters of authority will be issued and the estate will be administered according to the provisions of section 18, subsection 3 of the Administration of the Ceased Estates Act. Now, letters of executorship authorize the executor to, to act in respect of all matters pertaining to the winding up of the estate. The duties of the executor include opening an estate's late bank account, notifying third parties, banks and SARS of the death of the deceased, Collect all assets, settle liabilities and transfer or sale of assets of the deceased. On receipt 
of the letters of executorships, the executor must open an estate late bank account and place a Section 29 advertisement in a local paper and the government gazette. Now, this advertisement is for the attention of the debtors and creditors of the deceased. It informs them that they are granted a period of 30 days from publication to submit their claims against the estate. After the 30-day period has lapsed and all claims have been lodged, the solvency of the estate is determined and the executor will proceed to draft the liquidation and distribution account. The L&D account reflects all the assets and liabilities of the deceased as well as the distribution of the said assets to occur. The will of the deceased will determine who gets what in the end. If there is no will, the Intestate Succession Act will determine who gets what in the end. The accounts together with the supporting documents must be lodged at the master's office for his approval. The master will issue a query sheet for any queries pertaining to the account and it is the duty of the executor to answer these and supply the master with whatever information required. In order to finalize its examination of the account, once the master has approved the account, he will grant permission to advertise the account. The executor then needs to place the Section 35 advertisement in a local newspaper as well as the government gazette. This account will lay open for inspection for a period of 21 days from the publication date. Any interested party may lodge the objection with reasons to the master before the period for inspection has expired. If no objections are raised and the 20 days, 21 days has lapsed, the executor may then proceed to pre pay creditors and distribute the estate to the heirs. In accordance with the liquidation and distribution account, lastly, the executor needs to submit proof to the master that the estate has been liquidated according to the will or intestate succession act. These proofs may indicate proof that heirs received the inheritance, creditors were paid that um, creditors were paid and that the property was transferred. If the master is satisfied, he will issue a filing slip and the estate is formally closed. The process from reporting a deceased estate to distribution is lengthy and hair should always be prepared for this and any delays that may occur whilst the estate is being finalized. Winding up the estate's financials. The executor or master's representative is responsible for the winding up of the estate, ensuring that all creditors are paid and that any remaining assets or money is distributed to the heirs or beneficiaries in line with the deceased's will. It is important to make sure that the assets and liabilities of the deceased are accurately reflected in the inventory. In the instance where it is a section 18 subsection 3 estate, where there are immovable assets, bank accounts, and or policies that are listed in the inventory. The proof of the value are, um, will have to be lodged with the inventory. And if you do not have the value or proof, you'll need to um, obtain an MBU 9A or MBU 9B letter completed, signed, and rubber stamped from the master of the High Court to provide all relevant institutions to obtain the value and to obtain any challenges down the line. Personal representatives are responsible for settling any debts and liabilities for an estate before distributing the estate. Otherwise, they may be personally liable for those debts. Note, the term personal representative is the current legal term used to refer to an executor, executrix, administer, or, and the judicial or trustee. Debts typically fall into three main categories. First, you have debts incurred by the deceased while alive, such as loans, credit cards, and utilities. Then you have continuing debts, certain spousal or child maintenance, agreements, mortgages, and leases, contingent liabilities such as existing lawsuits, enforceable pledges made by the deceased to make gifts or donations, debts related to the death most commonly, um, funeral expenses, debts incurred by the personal or by the personal administrator, reasonable fees and expenses. The personal representative must undertake, must undertake a thorough investigation of all of the deceased's records and contact all the known creditors to determine outstanding balances. While it is not mandatory, the personal representative may also choose to advertise for creditors claim and, and claimants, unless the estate is simple. 
and the personal representative is very knowledgeable about the deceased's affairs. It would be prudent to advertise to avoid being held liable for those debts. Now, an example of an advertisement in the newspaper or government gazette for the deceased estate. This advertisement should notify individuals or businesses to submit any claims within a specific time frame. The standard is around 30 days. It should also indicate that the estate number it should also indicate the estate number and the individual's full name, date of birth, identity number, address, spouse information, executor's information, and any attorney's information and contact details if a legal representative is assisting. An example of an L&D account, this will contain all assets, be it movable or immovable, for example, property or vehicles, any shares listed on the JSC, jewelry, insurance, life cover, bank accounts, and any other item of value. Something you can add a rent value to should be added to this list. Now, an inventory to complete it to reflect a list of the deceased assets. It is immovable, movable, property and claims in favor of the estate. Attention is directed to the provisions of section 102 subsection 1 paragraph B of the Act, which provides that any person who willfully makes any false inventory under the Act shall be guilty of any offence and liable on conviction to a fine not exceeding 1,000 rand, or to imprisonment for a period not exceeding 5 years, or to both such fine and such imprisonment. Now, examples of liabilities and transfer wind up the estate's financials. The executor or master's representative is responsible um, for winding up the estate, ensuring that all creditors are paid and that any remaining assets or money is distributed to the heirs or beneficiaries in line with the deceased's will. It's important to make sure that the assets and liabilities of the deceased are more accurately reflected in the inventory. In the instance where it is a section 18 subsection 3 estate, where there are immovable assets, bank accounts, and or policies that are listed in the inventory, proof of the value will have to be lodged with the inventory. If you do not have value or proof, you will need to obtain an MBU 9A or an MBU 9B letter completed, signed, and rubber stamped from the master of the High Court to provide all the relevant institutions to obtain the value and to avoid any challenges down the line. Personal representatives are responsible for settling any debts and liabilities of an estate before distributing the estate. Otherwise, they may be personally liable for those debts. Debts typically fall into three main categories, like I have said. And then the personal representative must undertake a thorough investigation. Okay, so that is it for executorship or winding up of the estate. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay